Welcome back. It's nights like this that I'm very grateful for the Boston Bruins, because uh, tonight's hockey was well, it was it was something. Uh, at any rate, uh, some surprising results. We get we get into some comebacks tonight and some almost comebacks as well. So let's go ahead and start things off with. Pittsburgh and Ottawa. So this was quite the game. Uh, and you can see here that for the first two games, a lot more notes because those were the only two games that were on. Uh, it was DeSmith versus Talbot in this one. Pens had the early jump in it. Uh, Sens get a power play. Zucker was unhappy about that call. Didn't feel that it should have been a penalty. Kachuk has a shot that's held. Norris's shot is blocked. The Penguins cleared out. The power play is killed off. Two shots managed on that. Kapanen has a tip shot that's held. The teams exchange rush chances at that point. Hamannick has a blast that saved the Senators' press. The shots are four apiece at six minutes. At 6.36, Zucker opens the scoring from Pedersen and Malkin. The Sens then get a four-minute power play. And early on in it, at 7.44, Debrinkit scores from Batherson and Kachuk. It's a good cycle by Ottawa. They bury it. Pittsburgh, who has had a great penalty kill through a lot of this season, has really had a problem killing penalties lately. Norris nearly adds one. Penguins clear it out. Kachuk's denied on a on a turnover. And then as the minor ended, now this this goal got changed to a power play goal, but it's one of those ones that might change back and forth. So it is qualified as a power play goal by Stutzla from Kachuk at 944, and it was just as the other minor was ending. So they score on both ends of the minor penalty. Uh, Penguins then get a power play. Sens don't let them set up. Gensel has a net drive that's saved. The Sens clear it out. Kapanen has a shot that's held. There's a shorthanded rush by Stutzla that finishes the kill, and they only allowed the two shots on that. Penguins go back to the power play. It becomes a minute and seven of 5-0-3, of 5-on-3, I should say. Smith has a pass that deflects out. There's a near miss by Rust. The send's clear, but then during the 5-on-4, Malkin scores on the power play from Smith and Crosby at 15-23. Uh, Sens get another power play that's killed off. The Senators would press with a minute and a half left. So after the first period, it's 2-2. Second period, Sanderson's tonight on a 3-on-2. Malkin has a slot shot. That's held. And then Friedman gets his first goal on one that Talbot would definitely want back. Pedersen and Crosby with the assists at 3 7 The Penguins press for another. There was a post for Hamannick, so that's the second of the night. The Penguins clear it out. Uh, Shabbat has a net drive that's saved. Uh, Sens draw a power play. There's a shorthanded two-on-one. Carter fans on an opportunity, and then they get the power play marker. Do those Senators? It's Batherson from Kachuk and Shabbat at 9:19, and he buries it in close. No chance there for DeSmith. Zucker nearly answers on net drive the next shift. The shots are seven to three for the Sens with eight minutes left. Senators draw another power play. That's killed off. The Sens press after. Shabbat has a screenshot that saved. 40.1 seconds left. Another power play for Ottawa. Uh, it's a four-minute. You get an extra two minutes for beaking off at the ref. So you, you've got to watch that. So at any rate, uh, we end up going to the third period. Uh, the send cycle, the Penguins clear. That four-minute power play ends up being killed off. Uh, near miss then for Kastelik. Hamannick has a shot that's held. The shots are 4-1 to one for the Sens at five minutes. So Hamannick's on the board three times. He was generating offense tonight. Uh, Batherson has a shot that saved Sanderson held. Uh, Gruden has a net feed that's held as well. Uh, Sens press at six and a half minutes. Zucker ends up drawing a power play. So Zucker had a strong game. Gensel can't bury one from the slot. That's cleared out. Rust heals an opportunity, so he just fans on it. Uh, shorthanded rush by Gambrell, uh, and that ends up making it four on four for 21 seconds. Shabbat has a shot that's blocked. There's a near miss by Debrinkit. And then they give Pinto time to walk in and wire it. You can't do that. Kachuk and Giroux with the assists at 10.57. Makes it 4-3 to three in favor of the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Pens try to answer. There were too many sends on the ice, so Peng Penguins get a power play, and they score on it. It's Raquel from Crosby and Malkin at 12.33. Not the prettiest assist for Crosby, but hey, it's his third assist of the night. Penguins then press for the lead. Giroux fans on a rush chance. Batherson fires one wide in the final minute. Shabbat then had a chance that was saved. Goes into the overtime. In the overtime... Uh, the Penguins got the initial shot, the Sens control it, and then they score. It's Kachuk from Stutzla and Shabbat <clears> at <throat> 25 seconds. It was a really nice pass by Stutzla to set that up as well. So he wires that one on the rush, and your final score is 5-4 in in overtime for Ottawa. So they go to 20-21-3 with the win. With the overtime loss, Pittsburgh 22-15-7. Uh, shots in this one, 18-11 Ottawa in the first, 11-3 Ottawa in the second, 10-5 Ottawa in the third. 
Both teams had one shot in the overtime. Ottawa's the one that matters. They outshot Pittsburgh 40 to 20. Pittsburgh was lucky to get a point in this one. Uh, power plays, Pittsburgh 2 for 5, Ottawa 4 for 9. The hits, 34 to 23, Pittsburgh. DeSmith saved 35 out of 40. Talbot saved 16 out of 20. I didn't think Talbot had a great game, but Ottawa bails him out. So that's how that's supposed to work. Next up, uh, Boston in against the New York Islanders. The Islanders had a really solid start to this game. So it's Olmark versus Varlamov. The early jump was to those Islanders. Uh, there's a near miss then for Pasternak from his spot in front of the net. We all know where Pasternak's uh, place on the ice is. The Islanders then get a power play. Uh, Forbert loses a skate blade during the kill, but the Bruins do clear it out, and he does get to the bench. Uh, Puck is or Pollock has a shot pass that misses. The shots are three to two for the Bruins at six minutes after they've killed that penalty off. Pajos tonight on a turnover. Chalosky had a shot tip wide. Believe they said this is his debut this year uh, with the Islanders. So. A uh, pretty good game for Cholosky. I honestly thought he played well. Um, Islanders press, but they end up taking a penalty during that. McAvoy is a shot that's blocked. The Islanders cleared out. Bruins weren't able to set up after that. Islanders killed that off. Uh, Foligno has a wraparound. That saved. Beauvillier then had a blast that was saved. But before the period's out at 15:41, Parisi scores from Ajo and Pajo. It was a one-timer. And Olmark just almost had it, but he missed it. So... It's a goal. It's a one nothing goal for the Islanders. Islanders look for another. There's a near miss for Barzell and a delayed call. Uh, with 1.44 left, that call is made. The Islanders go into the power play. They cycle. The Bruins, though, blocking and clearing it out. So that rolls over to the second period. The Bruins do finish the kill. Pajot then fans on an opportunity. The shots are 2 nothing for the Islanders at three minutes. So they've controlled a lot of this game. They're playing very well. Lee has a net feed. That's cleared. Then there's a crossbar for Taylor Hall. And not long after, at 7.48, McAvoy puts one off Varlamov, sticking in. Uh, Grizzlick and Coyle with the assists on that one. So it just it, it went off the shaft of the stick and into the net. Uh, Forbert then adds one from Zaka and Pasternak at 11 minutes. Buries the rebound on a press. Forbert had a very good game here. Uh, that makes it 2-1 to one for the Bruins. Marshawn then can't bury one in close. The shots are 6-5 to five for Boston. With six and a half minutes left, so they're starting with the momentum now. They're starting to generate a lot of chances. Carlos denied the rebound cleared. The Islanders get a power play. It does not last. We end up with a minute and 35 seconds of four on four. Uh, Zizekas has a rush chance. That's caught and held. There's a press by the Islanders during the four on four, but everything gets killed off. No power play goals there. The Islanders press with a minute and a half left. Coyle, last second attempt for him. That's caught by Varlamov. We're going to the third period with the score two to one Boston. Third period, Clutterbuck has a chance this block. The Islanders get a power play. Bruins don't let them set up. So good penalty killing in this one tonight. Cholosky has a shot this blocked as it ends. Bruins then get a power play of their own. Bergeron took a puck to the face and exited. I'm hoping that since it deflected that it wasn't that hard of a shot and that he's okay and that he just went out for the stitches and he'll be fine. Uh, but they do score on that power play with Bergeron out. Marshawn scores from Pasternak and McAvoy at 5.03. The Islanders then get a power play. Uh, Dobson has a blast that's held. There was a post for Parisi. The rebound is cleared. That's killed off. The Islanders press after. The Islanders press again with eight and a half minutes left. Bruins get a power play. The Islanders do kill that off. And then Frederick scores at 15.38. He buries that one on the doorstep. Uh, Coyle and Smith with the assist there. And then with 1.20 left, the Bruins take a delay a game call. That means that the Islanders end the game on the power play. They don't score. Your final score is 4-1 to one for Boston. They go to 35-5-4. Just ridiculous. Uh, the Islanders 23-19-4. They failed to take advantage of Pittsburgh only getting the one point tonight. So the shots in this one, 10-6 New York in the first. 10-9 uh, to nine New York in the second. 9-6 to six Boston in the third. Final shots 26-24 Islanders. Power plays Boston 1 for 4. The Islanders 0 for 6. Uh, hits 24-21 Boston. Olmark saves 25 out of 26. And Varlamov saves 20 out of 24 at the other end. So, I need to change boards. All right, so the Colorado Avalanche in against uh, Calgary. Why, well, yes, that is a new magnet. Thanks for asking. Um, I, I've always thought the, the Avs foot would be a good one to have for, for the top of the board, even though they don't use it anymore. So, it's Georgiev versus Markstrom in this one. No Makar, of course. Kale Makar not in the lineup. It's considered day-to-day. -day. It's not considered anything major. Uh, it takes until 6:17, but Rantanen puts Colorado on the board from Comfer and Taves. The Avs then get a power play. The Flames do kill that off. They only allow the one shot. 
But halfway through the first period, the shots are 8-5 to five in favor of Colorado. They came out very strong in this one. Uh, Lekkonen feels he scored. It's reviewed, and yeah, he did. Uh, it basically, it went in the net and then under the net out the other side, and they just didn't see it while it was in the net. So Lekkonen gets that one from McKinnon at 11-01, and then the Avs go back to the power play. They score on it. It's Lekkonen again. This time, Rantanen and McKinnon with the assists at 12-58. Puck bounces to him, and he buries it. Uh, Flames then get a power play. Kadri has a chance deflected wide. That's cleared out. Uh, Rizich gets denied as the Avs finish the kill. So after the first period, this one looks ugly. It's 3-0 in favor of Colorado. And of course, there was a couple of ugly first periods in these games tonight. Second period, McKinnon has a rush chance. That's held. The shots are 3-2 Colorado at 2.5 minutes. Uh, Flames forecheck causes a steal. Hunt then has a blast that's kicked aside. Taves has a shot that's saved on a face-off win. Avs get a power play. Newhook was denied as that came to an end. Comfer has a shot that's blocked. There's some momentum for Colorado at this point. Backlund, though, was then robbed. The Flames would press after that. McKinnon has a net drive that save. There was a press by Calgary with nine minutes left. The Avs are really hanging on at this point. It's almost all Flames. Uh, then the Avs get some pressure, but they're kept to the outside. Rodriguez with a net drive. That's defended. Backlund nearly scores. Kadri has a shot held as the Flames press, and they'd press again in the final minute. So after going down 3-0, Calgary played an excellent game. So we go to the third period, the Flames get a power play, and they score on it. It's to Foley from Anderson and Lindholm at 227. Post and in, far side. Uh, screenshot, too. Shots are 3-2 for Calgary at 6.5 minutes. Lewis is denied. Georgiev holds. Flames are defending really well at this point in the game. Uh, the fans call one. The referee does not. Uh, Rodriguez has a net drive that's saved. The goalie's pulled with three minutes left. And they had some pressure. They had some chances. But Ranton hits the empty net at 19.02, or would have if not for being slashed by Zadorov. So the referees discuss, and they award the goal to Ranton. And so uh, that was his uh, second of the game. Your final score in this one's 4-1 to one, Colorado. They go to 23-17-3. The Avs have suddenly turned it on. They've now won three in a row. Uh, Calgary 21-16-9 with the loss. The shots in this one, 14-12 Calgary in the first. 12-10 Calgary in the second. 13-3. Or 14-12 Colorado in the first. 12-10 Colorado in the second. And then 13-3 Calgary in the third. They do end up out shooting Colorado by a total of 35-29. Power plays Colorado 1 for 3. Calgary 1 for 2. Hits 19-12 for Calgary. Georgiev saves 34-35. Really good game for Georgiev. And Markstrom saved 25 out of 28 at the other end. And again, after they went down 3-0, they played a really good game. But in the end, they take the loss. Speaking of playing really well while they were behind tonight, let's talk about the Canucks and their new threads against Tampa Bay Lightning. So it was Elliott versus Martin, and they had a nice ceremony for Geno Ogic. There were a lot of his former teammates. I recognized every last one of them. Um, there were some, some special teams he played with. Arguably, I would say the best teams the Canucks ever had. With, with all apologies to the back-to-back -back President's Trophy winners of the early 2010s, I still think the early to mid-90s Canucks was the, 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 the best roster, the one that was most built towards winning, and I, I really thought they were going to win a championship there. So then nice ceremony, and they revealed the new third jersey, which I absolutely love. I think it's fantastic. Everybody dunked on the Fanatics one. It's like, Fanatics and Adidas aren't the same thing. You guys don't know what kind of accents are going to be in the jerseys. And certainly... It looks really nice. So, uh, Garland's tonight in close as the Canucks press. Kucherov then has a shot that's held. That was the only shot that Tampa had for a while. It was 4-1 uh, to one in favor of Vancouver uh, in shots at four minutes. But it happens at 440. I told you, Bill, Tampa Bay fans, didn't I? He'd get it. Uh, Stamkos gets his 500th against Vancouver. He got the 499th against Vancouver. It's just meant to be. And scoring against the Canucks while they're wearing their skate jerseys. That's a tradition that goes back to the 80s. So it was a really nice throwback for me. Uh, Kalorn with the assist there. Studnika then has a long shot that's held. The shots were 7-2 for Vancouver at that point, but at 8-28 on their fourth shot. It's a one-timer on a great cycle, and Kucherov gets that from Hagel and Point. Uh, Kuzmenko nearly answers. The Bolts get some pressure, and they score. Uh, Point buries a rebound from Chernak and Colton at 13-18, so he stays red hot. Then at 14-35... Stamko scores another from Kalorn, and that would end the night for Martin. Martin's out, Dealey is in. Canucks end up drawing a power play shortly thereafter. Horvat has a rush chance that's held. Power play's killed off. 
Uh, Lazar has a deflected shot that's held, but going into the second period, Vancouver putting themselves behind 4 nothing against a team that's gone to three straight Stanley Cup finals and won twice. So, second period, uh, Canucks line juggling, juggling early, totally understandable. Boudreaux trying to do something to make it work. Uh, early press by the Bolts, Mikheyev's then denied from the slot. Colton picks off a pass and rushes. Horvat goes to the box, Bolts with the power play. Uh, Bolts take a while to set it up, Canucks clear it out after that. Colton with the net drive is saved as the power play comes to an end. Uh, shots are 5-1 to one Tampa at 8 minutes. Uh, Canucks get a power play at the half, that's killed off. Miller then had a rush chance, that was held. Pedersen has a rush chance that's held. The Canucks press in the final minute with those fantastic looking jerseys. They're unable to get a goal. It's still 4-0 after two. Third period, Stamkos is denied on a net drive. There was a post for Pedersen. The shots are 2-0 Tampa at two and a half minutes. Canucks draw a power play. During that, a fan gets hit with a puck. He was okay though. And they gave him a puck and they gave him a stick. It's kind of nice. And then I, I guess that was a good luck charm because um, I'm not saying they need to hit fans more regularly. I want to make that clear. Uh, Kuzmenko scores on the power play from Hughes and Miller at 6.35. What have I done? But yeah, so that, that breaks the shutout right there. Kuzmenko tips it because that's what he does. Uh, then there's a near miss for Pedersen from the slot. The Canucks go back to the power play. Some overpassing during that. Uh, Paul then had a shorthanded rush, but the Canucks would set it back up and they score. Uh, Hughes gets his first power play goal of the season. He scores that from Miller and Horvat at 9.10. I thought JT Miller had a good game tonight, and I know that sounds like sacrilege to Canucks fans, but he did. I thought he had a good game. Garland's then denied as the Canucks press. Lockwood had a rush chance that's held. Seeing Will Lockwood wearing the number seven feels wrong to me as a Cliff Ronning fan. Seeing that, seeing that 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 skate jersey and somebody wearing seven, I just right right away my brain went to Ronning. I'm like Lockwood's not really Ronning, but. Nice rush chance that gets saved. Goalie pulled with 3.42 left. Miller saves an empty net goal, but uh, they eventually get it, and it's Stamkos with the hat trick goal for 5.02 from Kucherov at 18.38. Something with Stamkos. He scores in bunches, and Vancouver was very accommodating. Your final score is 5-2 for Tampa. They go to 29-13 and 1 with the win. Vancouver 18-23 and 3 with the loss. So if you're on Team Tank for Vancouver, uh, you got to see a really nice jersey. You got to see Kuzmenko and Hughes get goals. The Canucks played well. I thought they outplayed Tampa for large portions of this game. They didn't get the saves they needed. So the shots in this one, in the first period, 18-12 to 12 Vancouver in the first. That's the most shots they've had in the first period all season. Second period, 12-8 Vancouver. Third period, 9-5. Final shots, 39-25 to 25 for Vancouver. Power plays, Tampa only had the one, didn't score on it. Vancouver goes 2-4. for four. Hits, 22-11 to 11 Vancouver. Elliott saves 37 out of 39. Spencer Martin saves 6 out of 10. Rough night for him. And then Delia saved all 14 in relief. I like Colin Delia. I, you know, I, I do. I think he's playing well. All right. And now the rage inducer of the night, which was Dallas against San Jose. Now, I, I really thought we were going to get a shootout at points during this. But at any rate, it was Ottinger versus Reimer. I, I didn't know Ottinger was going to have one of those kind of slightly off nights. He And he does. And he's a young goaltender and this happens. It's very similar to Swayman in Boston. The difference being that Ottinger's the starter and he gets enough games that I don't think his his rough games show up as much. As with Swayman, he might get a start once a week, maybe once every 10 days. And so if he doesn't have a great game, it gets talked about a lot. Uh, early jump for Dallas. Haskinen has a shot that's held. There was a crossbar for Pavelski. Shots are 3-0 Dallas at 3.5 minutes. Reimer was the reason this was scoreless until Delandria scores. Uh, from Haskin and Ben at 6.43, and he was allowed to just walk in and wire it. So it's one of those ones where the defense needs to keep the guy out. Stars then look for another. The shots are 10-3 to for Dallas at the half. They wouldn't get another shot the rest of the way. Uh, they draw a power play due those those stars. Sharks don't let them set up. They kill it off. No shots. Uh, then there's a post for Asamont. Uh 40.6 seconds left. The Stars get another power play. They get no shots during that 40 seconds. Rolls over into the second period. Couture has a shorthanded chance that's saved. And ends up drawing a penalty, so there's three seconds of four on four, and then the Sharks have the power play. Everything's killed off there, and then Robertson scores his 30th of the year. He fires that one home from Miller and Haskin and at 354. Uh, ben couldn't bury one where Reimer was out of the net shortly thereafter. Uh, Sharks press, the Stars block and clear, and then Foxa puts one in off Meyer skate from Olofsson at 657. It's 3-0 Dallas. Easy street. No. So uh, the Sharks press, the Stars block, all that. Everything goes in off, and then it goes in off Myers Gate, and then it, it just it just turns. You've got this half, and then this half. 
Sharks get a power play that was killed off, but the momentum starts to swing, and Lawrence scores from Gregor at 941 on a turnover. He turns and wires it. So we started to see this lately where the spinoramas come back. Uh, at any rate, at 11.49, Benito then buries one in from in close. He's been scoring a lot lately. Barabanov and Carlson with the assist there. Sharks press, draws them a power play, and they score on it. It's Timo Meyer stays red hot from Carlson and Hurdle. So Carlson with two assists to this point. That's at 15.18. And I wrote underneath, total meltdown stars. This is Dallas just absolutely in meltdown mode. 15 seconds left. The stars get a power play. That rolls over into the third. Pavelski has a shot that saved the Sharks, clear it out. Uh, the, that's killed off Fox this tonight after. So there's two things that happen here. Dallas, with a meltdown, they just take their eye off the ball. Plus, when they did get the opportunities, Reimer bounces back from what would be considered kind of a rough first half of the game. He shuts things front, shut things, shuts things down from there. There we go. Eventually it works. So there was a post for Hurdle from a sharp angle. The shots on net are 4-0 for Dallas at four and a half minutes. Benning has a blast that's held. The Sharks press at six minutes. Meyer is robbed on a one-timer, and then Carlson puts San Jose into the lead from Benino and Sturm at 10.41. It's just inside the post, and I saw it coming. I totally saw it coming. Once it was tied, I, I had a feeling San Jose was going to win it. I did expect that in a shootout, though. Uh, so the shots are 12-7 for the Stars with five and a half minutes left, but they weren't generating much late. Like I, I didn't feel like they were they were threatening to tie this or anything. Uh, goalie pull with two minutes left, and eventually Couture hits the empty net at 19:24. Makes your final score five to three for San Jose. They go to 14:23 and nine with the win. Dallas drops to 26:13 and seven with the loss. They had the opportunity to make up some ground on Winnipeg. Don't get that done. Uh, so the shots in this one: 10-6 Dallas in the first, 12 to 10 San Jose in the second, 16 to nine for Dallas in the third. Final shots. 36 to 27 in favor of the Dallas Stars. Power plays Dallas 0 for 3, San Jose 1 for 3. Uh, hits 22 to 18, San Jose Ottinger. 22 saves on 26 shots. Reimer, again, after those, that third goal went in, he was a wall. 33 saves on 36 shots. Deserves full credit for that. And there you go. You're all caught up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I'm, I'm glad I get paid to watch this. Anyways, thank you guys so much for all your support. I, Of course, if I didn't, if I didn't have this channel, I would have been playing the PlayStation 2 when it was about 3 nothing. I, or PlayStation 2. That's way back. But PS4 is what I have now because the 5 can't find it. But yeah, I, I would have been on the PlayStation back in the day. I'm like, well, they're, they're, they're done. And then you turn it off. And now I don't do that. There you go. Uh, thanks again for all your support. I will talk to you guys soon enough.